the movie is set in a small town in Scotland where we see a middle-aged man and flock of ravens are seen heading their way towards the town, and then we see a policewoman named Rachel wakes up from a bad dream. After waking up she finds a black feather on the pillow. She takes a look at it and soon gets ready and heads out for her first night shift at the police station while walking along. Rachel sees that man as standing in the middle of the road while she is looking at him. A car approaches with high speed and crashes into the man seeing this Rachel quickly runs towards the car. Soon the young driver named Caesar comes out of the car to take a look but Caesar and Rachel get surprised after seeing no wonder Rachel notices some blood marks on the front and also the windshield is broken yet the man's body is nowhere to be found using this chance Caesar tries to make his way out of there saying there are no casualties but Rachel still arrests him and takes him to the police station. Rachel gets to the police station and meets Sergeant McCready. Then the sergeant tells her that Caesar is their regular client since he always gets arrested for doing illegal stuff. In the next scene we see Constable Warnock and Mundy who in car having an extramarital affair while they are doing their thing. Rachel calls them and asks them to keep a look for the man that Caesar crashed into while Rachel and McCready are talking about the blood on the headlights. Caesar gets a flashback of himself hitting a girl with his car, and even McCready also tells her they couldn't hold him for too long since there is no victim. But eventually they take Caesar and puts him in a cell. In the meantime after getting to the basement Rachel sees another convict named Beswick. Beswick is charged for assaulting his wife and killing the baby in her womb. After locking up Caesar they goes out and while they are talking the two officers on patrol arrives to the police station with the man. They gets to the old man and starts to interrogate about himself but the man doesn't say anything and just sits still. The cops think this might be due to intoxication and goes to call for a doctor soon. Dr. Hume gets to the police station and treats the man. Hume says that he doesn't have any intoxication so it is not that he can't talk but it is just he doesn't want to while Hume is treating him. He says something which makes Hume remember about the crime he committed. Recently realizing that the man knows about it and Hume tries to kill the man seeing the doctor aggressive behavior they restrains him and takes him to basement and puts him in a cell after getting to the basement Caesar and Beswick sees Dr. Humes and asks him why he is here but he remains silent. After some time the cox takes the man's fingerprints to identify him, and soon they finds out through the fingerprints and records that his name is Alexander Monroe. And turns out he died in 1983 in a fire accident. Then the cop asks him how is he still alive? Question mark and then he asks Alexander why the doctor tried to attack him and what he knows. But he talks about something else and reminds McCready of his sins remembering this. He gets angry and tells Rachel to take him to the basement later while sending him to the cell. Rachel sees some visions of herself as a child being tied up and abused. Then while locking up the cell, Mundy gets the vision of herself killing someone while investigating. She gets panicked and immediately runs out of there. Soon Rachel gets to Mundy and asks what is wrong but Mundy doesn't want to talk about that and turns her away later. Warnock tells the sergeant that Hume's wife is not responding to the call and McCready tells them to go to his house and tells them about Hume being locked up. And then McCready puts Rachel in charge of the station and he leaves to investigate something to know about Alexander after the officers all left. While Rachel is checking the book she again gets the visions of herself being abused. She then opens the book and starts searching for the names written in the book and turns out each and every one of them is dead back at the cell. The convicts talk about themselves and then Alexander calls Beswick as name and reminds him of his sins. He often beats his wife and gets arrested, but as soon as his wife forgives him she comes to take him back again Alexander then asks him to confess his sins and why he beats up his wife but Beswick accuses everything else instead of himself Alexander gives one more chance but still he doesn't confess then he lights up a matchstick and a shadowy hand reaches to Beswick and soon the lights in his cell and the camera goes off meanwhile Rachel noticed this and when she is about to act she gets a call from Warnock saying Hume's house is empty suddenly Beswick starts to behave like he was possessed in keeps hitting his head to the cell. Soon Rachel notices this and runs to the basement and opens up his cell. He immediately runs out and falls down seeing this Hume offers Rachel to help her out when she is reluctant. Hume tells that he is the only one that can save him at this time and asks her to let him out. After opening the cell he quickly gets to Beswick and checks him. Then Beswick looks at Alexander and says that he saw who he truly is and falls back seeing this. Rachel tries to contact the sergeant but he doesn't pick up. 
Then we see that his house is filled with corpses. He then picks up the parts into a trash bag and takes to dispose them, and soon Rachel and Hume gets Beswick out of the basement. Meanwhile Mundy and Warnock gets to Hume's house and after searching all the place they see that Hume's has killed his entire family. They immediately calls to Rachel and informs her about Hume and the deaths of his family. And Hume also hears this and tries to warn Rachel but Rachel hits him with a baton and then restrains him. She quickly takes him to the basement and lock up. Then Caesar tells Rachel that Alexander told him that they are all here for a reason cause they all did mistakes and it is time to pay for them, and Alexander asks Rachel what she did but she doesn't answer him and leaves from there. And again she gets the visions of herself escaping from the abuser and running out of the house. Meanwhile the sergeant has some other dead bodies at this house. He packed them up and then calls Rachel. Rachel tells him about human Beswick and then the sergeant tells her to keep it under control until he arrives. He soon pulls out a box from under his bed and takes out a gun from it back at the basement while Caesar is saying that he doesn't deserve to be here. Alexander reminds what he did while Caesar is driving he hits a girl he gets down to look at her but instead of helping her he leaves her there and runs away and Alexander tells Caesar that he still has time to help the girl. But Caesar denies saying that he will be in worse trouble. And soon Mundy and Warnock gets back to the station and informs Rachel about what they saw at Hume's house. After noticing the dead body of Beswick they asks Rachel about it. Rachel tells that he committed suicide by himself when she is about to tell about something is off with Alexander. They both quickly gets to the doctor they gets him out and takes him back to interrogate while Warnock is feeling sad about the deaths of the children of Hume. Alexander talks with him and then he reminds Warnock of his sins of beating up and killing a person along with Mundy while investigating him. He then quickly rushes back to the doctor. Rachel and Mundy interrogates him to tell why he did the killings. Dr. Hume tells that he is trying to find the key to immortality by locating the soul and trapping it and so he could bring the dead back to life. While this is happening, Warnock immediately gets there and he starts beating up the doctor. He beats Hume to the table's handle and kills him. Monday then suggests that they have to work out on a cover-up story. When Rachel tries to intervene Monday tells her this is the justice he deserves and tries to convince her to go along with them. She then hears that Caesar is calling for her and goes to check on Caesar then tells that he hit a girl while driving and that is her blood on the car while he is telling the location. Alexander intervenes and says that she died two minutes ago. Rachel then gets to Alexander and asks him how he knows all this and who he is. Then we see that he is the one that gave Rachel the chance to escape when she is a child, and he tells her that Mundy and Warnock are planning for Rachel's murder to cover up the tracks. Rachel gets back and she hears them talking how to murder her. When Warnock is reluctant Mundy convinces him saying that there should be no witnesses and she plans to kill everyone else in the station. Then Rachel gets a call from McCready and she gets caught. She then hints McCready about Mundy and Warnock and soon they tries to attack her. But Rachel fights back with them and tries to escape. But in the end she gets caught up by them when Warnock is about to kill her McCready gets to the station and then he shoots Warnock in this game a chance to Mundy and Rachel to escape. They quickly runs and goes to hide inside a room. But soon McCready breaks the door and shoots Mundy on the shoulder. They both manages to escape and get into the basement when he is not able to get into the basement. He backs off. Meanwhile Rachel asks Alexander for help but he declines and soon the power goes off. And when Rachel takes a look outside she sees that McCready is pouring the oil around the station. He pours the oil down to the basement and then lights it up. Rachel then opens up the cells and lets them out. When she asks Alexander for his help he tells that the other's fates are sealed and says that he can help her if she wants and all she has to do is leave them to their fate later. They take some blankets and gets them wet to cover themselves and runs out of the flames while they are trying to escape McCready waits for them and tries to kill them. When the Mundy tries to run she slips and falls on the broken glass. McCready gets to her and pushes her throat down the glass. After that he gets to Caesar and kills him when he is about to shoot Rachel. She throws a gas can on him resulting in McCready get hurt in return. Then Rachel gets to him and crushes his head after Rachel gets out of there. Alexander also comes out and then he's 
strikes out the names of the dead ones in the police station while explaining their sins. And then it is revealed that Alexander is the devil and he was here to collect the souls of the people who are gathered in the police station which is a limbo and it is evident that the place is not set in the town but somewhere else since we couldn't see a single person around other than them. After crossing the names of the sinners we see Rachel's raven themed picture in the book. Then Alexander tells Rachel that he saw her fleeing from the abuser and since then he couldn't forget the flame of vengeance in her eyes. Then he asks her to accompany him in punishing the wicked for their sins. Soon Rachel agrees to the offer and then they both share a kiss and that's it. What are you waiting for? Subscribe the channel to see more recaps and don't forget to like the video and click bell icon to see more videos. Have a good day.